to my YouTube channel. I keep forgetting to introduce myself. My name is Lori. I am from the East Coast of the United States. The state I'm in is called Maryland, and I am a makeup artist for work, but I'm also a makeup enthusiast. I am also a lover of hair care, anything beauty, fashion, all the things. I also love travel vlogs. I travel very seldom these days, but I love to travel. I like food blogs. I like landscape, gardens, all those kind of things. Um, love to sit on the beach with a drink with an umbrella in it and just chilling. Um, love dogs, have a dog, have children, love children. And yeah, those are a few things about me. And on this channel, I talk about not just makeup and getting ready with me, but I also talk about um, other things like how my week's been, good, bad, the ugly, a little bit about work here and there, um, a little bit about family life, a little bit about some of my adventures, some of my struggles, and all the things. And I would love to hear from you in the comments if you could relate in any way to any of the things that I talk about or have any questions. So we're going to get started with a little bit of makeup. Today I am not doing any foundation. I know, right? I'm going to use some Waleda Skin Food just to moisturize my skin. I did have some makeup on earlier and then I took it off and then I decided to do this today. So yeah. So I've already got my brows done and I'm just going to put this on my skin to hydrate it because I still want my skin to look healthy and have a little glow to it and not be matte. So I think this is a great moisturizer, especially in the winter time, especially. It is reasonably priced also. The odor is kind of I don't know. It smells like if you were putting a plant on your face, if that makes any sense. But it works wonders. They have a lot of different formulas, but I happen to love the skin food. One product I've had for a while that I've only used a few times, and I've only bought this product from the company and kind of stopped there. It's by Refi, and it's Topaz, and it is a gloss highlighter. And one of my friends on Instagram said that it was fabulous and she loved it and I trust her opinion and it is nice. Would I buy it again? No. Um, this is what it looks like. So it's very kind of bronzy, glowy. So I thought this would go good on your decollete or shoulders or body, but also it could be nice under makeup as a highlighter or just on your skin. So I thought we would try that and just put it on my skin over the skin food and see what happens. Yeah, I might be a glow worm, but let's find out. I should grab a mirror and take a look to see if I regret this. I am going to try this time to keep the compact out of the mirror so you guys can see what I'm doing. So guys, I tried to get a camera. I got one of the cheaper ones on Amazon. I was super excited about it and thought, oh, okay, this is gonna look more professional. Here I go. The iPhone is not gonna be used anymore. Well, used it. My son edited it for me. I should have let him like show me before he posted it. He posted it and I thought, okay, let me sit down and take a look at it. And I thought, it's only eight minutes long. Hmm. I did much more than that. And then when I looked at it, I was like, the quality is not as good as the iPhone. Now, I know there's more expensive cameras out there, and I did not splurge for those. So that could be part of the problem. But I think also part of the problem is, is it could be the user, aka me. Um, or some kind of setting or something I did or didn't do right. Um, obviously, I was charging it the wrong way because it died literally during the makeup. But 
yeah, I returned it along with the tribe that came with the tripod and any accessories I had additionally ordered. And yeah, going back to the iPhone, going back to the eye or the back camera. Don't mind the way this refi looks on my skin. I can live with it, but we're gonna take some Pacifica. Um, I've had this while, it's the liquid cover. It's a full coverage lasting concealer and we are just gonna use it kind of the under the eye area, to be honest. So um, I chose something that's not super light because I don't want it to really stand out that I'm doing a no foundation look. I actually got the idea from Alana. She was talking the other day on her YouTube. Someday I'll learn to link people's YouTubes, one day. And um, she talked about how she doesn't really, really do foundation. She uses a concealer um, where she wants it. And maybe someday she doesn't. I don't remember, but I know that she's kind of a typically no foundation kind of a person. Um, so I thought, let me try that. So I've got some concealer. I'm just going to work it in. I usually like to go over my eyelids if it's kind of a matte texture. Now, I would not go over my eye if it was the Glossier Stretch Concealer. It's quite emollient, and I think that the eyeshadow would just move around. Unless you wanted it to move around. So, yeah, there's that. Maybe over the bridge of my nose a little bit. Just kind of spot treating and putting it where I want rather than that full face. You don't always have to have a full face of foundation. Even if your skin is um, maturing, not the same as it used to be. Um, starting to change your eyelids and your face, just the skin starts to go south. So um, yeah, things change and that's it but it doesn't mean you can't wear a no foundation look you have to embrace your skin as it is and if you don't embrace it and you want to go have all the things done well by all means if you've got the money and the time and um really desire it i think everybody has to do what's right for them and so yeah but i for one have to live with the skin that I have, and so I'm just gonna live with it. <laughs> On to the bronzer. We are gonna use Charlotte Tilbury. This is the airbrush bronzer in deep, I believe. Number three. I'm not gonna talk that much about what I'm using. What's the point? Just use it. So yeah, even though you have no foundation on, it doesn't mean no blush, doesn't mean no bronzer. I hope everyone is doing well and has had a good week. Um, mine has been hit and miss. Good days and bad days, like us all, right? Um, I was talking to a few friends I have grown up with from high school and my neighborhood where I grew up. And we were just talking about life and going down memory lane and sharing things. And there's so many things that I did not know were going on with them. Just like they didn't know about a lot of things going on with me. It was really interesting and fun to catch up and just talk about life and knowing what's going on with them now. And we just keep in touch. It's an app called Marco Polo where you can leave videos back and forth instead of voice notes. I really love it. So yeah, we were talking and one of the subjects that we talk about quite often is religion, which is always a very delicate topic. Um, growing up in Utah and Idaho, there's something that a lot of people don't realize and that is, is that Idaho, um, Utah, even into Wyoming, Arizona, those states out west are predominantly Mormon, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, so I was born into that religion and grew up in that religion. And so we were talking about that as we do quite often. And let me tell you, this is Pat McGrath blush. And it was very interesting in discussing these things and just 
the different point of views that we have as individual women as we've grown up and how we're living our lives now. So I'm one of those people that you would call the black sheep of the family because I kind of flew, flew, flew away, flew the, left the nest and decided that um, after my mom died that I was just going to live my best life and do all the things I couldn't do or shouldn't be doing during the time that I was growing up in the church. Um, one thing, tasting alcohol. Tasted it for the first time when I was 30 years old. I know, almost unheard of in some territories. Um, all the things. And just talking about it brought back a lot of memories about how religion can shape your life and mold um, your path and the trajectory of your future, um, whether or not you go to college or not. If you start a family too young, people in Idaho and Utah, they get married at like 18, 19 years old. That's the expectation is to just hurry and get married and find a husband, find a wife and immediately start having kids, have as many babies as you can. And that is what a woman's calling is. And education is not necessarily on the forefront at all, which is so bad because you find yourself in situations where marriages don't work out, whatever. And then women find themselves in situations where they have no education and no job and are relying on child support if they get it and all the things. And meanwhile, this is just my personal opinion. I know some of my friends might watch this. If you go to the church that promoted having all these children and getting married so young, and you say, hey, I just got a divorce. I never got an education. I've got all these kids. I don't know what to do. I don't have money. I can't, I'm stuck. The first thing out of their mouths is, well, go to your family. And if they can't help you, go to the government. They never once say, come to us. Yet, they're the ones that said, hurry, get married, have kids, and start your family. It makes zero sense to me. And the conversation went on and on. And if you want, I can talk more about it. But if it's a sensitive, sensitive subject for you, or it's triggering, um, I'm sorry about that. I should have said that beforehand. But yeah, if you want me to talk more in depth about that, let me know in the comments and we definitely can. I might put it in the subject line just so anybody that is sensitive um, can just keep going. Moving on, let's use some highlighter. You guys, I found this forever ago. This is the Fenty Beauty highlighter. It is kind of the split highlighter set. It's Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset. It's the Kilowatt Foil Highlighter. And obviously this one got a little destroyed, but they're very beautiful, very pigmented. And you know where I found this? TJ Maxx. I know, right? Let's use the Mimosa one, which is kind of orangey here. Why not for fun? I'll use this compact. It won't get in the way. Surely it won't. Ah, if I can open it. So, yes. All the talk about all the things. Such a different lifestyle growing up that way. It's not something people are going to know about you. But it's definitely an interesting subject. And I think it's a given if you live in those parts of the country, people just kind of assume that you are, if that makes any sense. I don't know if you can see the glow on, on this and this lighting here, but it's pretty good, I will say. Guess you could mix the two together a little bit, but yeah, it's pretty. I should get up closer. We'll do a little bit on the tip of my nose. Mmm. <laughs> That's a little bit of an orangey nose there, but oh well. That's fine. 
believe it. It almost could work as a blush too, just because of the pigment on this one. Some of them are pretty light, like the um, Kilowatt, uh, the What a Brat, which is pink and it's a little more translucent. It wouldn't necessarily be a blush. Anyway, we're gonna use Pat McGrath for eyeshadow. And I love Pat McGrath eyeshadows. This is the Mega Mothership. Um, and it is Celestial Nirvana. I know there's quite a few people that have this one. It looks like this. We're just gonna pick randomly. I had no rhyme or reason for this. I was just like, gonna pick whatever. So let's pick something together. We're gonna use this brush right here. I thought that we could go in with a matte color because I wanna use some Bodyography glitter pigment over the top. And I thought that that would be a good idea. First of all, let's see what the colors of the glitter pigment are. That would be helpful. Let me unbox these and we'll be right back. Okay, I've opened them. So one of them is called Stratus and it's kind of a champagne-y, very light tone. This one's Mood and it's very kind of gold bronzy. So I thought we would go with this one. So I'm trying to think about what I would want to go with first. We should do something a little bit more out of the box, but I guess we could go with some orange, right? We could use this orange shade and be adventurous. Let's use this Fenty palette since it's so small. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of create a, maybe a little bit of a halo effect, I guess you could say. I hope you guys can see me okay. I can't really zoom in with the back camera with what I have going on now, what I'm working with now. So I can't believe it's almost Jan or January. Can't believe it's almost February. I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, 2004 has come in with a roar. What do you guys think about it so far? I got thinking about it and I thought, why is there such a big expectation about the calendar turning to another year? I mean, it is just really, if you think about it technically, a turn of the calendar and another date. It's not like you're leaving everything behind you from 2023 like in one day's time. It's not like everything's gonna change overnight. It's like new year resolutions. Why don't we make resolutions month to month or day to day? Like today I'm gonna to wake up and I'm gonna to go to the gym or I'm gonna eat healthier or I'm going to do some projects I've been putting off. It just blows my mind that we're waiting for a calendar to turn midnight for it to be a new number so that we can get our shit together. It's been a while since I've worn orange eyeshadow. It's quite an adventure, I will say. I forgot about that. That's kind of fun. Um, we are going to take a different brush, like a flat brush and grab this pigment. Like you could spray this brush with like a setting spray to grab this, but unfortunately I didn't put any near me. And so hold on and let me grab some. Yes, I realize I'm cutting off my head. However, I want you to be able to see this. So I'm going to spray this brush a little bit. This is Lottie London setting spray. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to get some of this Bodyography glitter pigment, which is very, very popular. A lot of people really, really are into this pigment and for good reason. It's very, very good. This is gifted to me, by the way, with no obligation to post. And let's just put some in the center here and see what we got going. Hopefully they'll give us the shimmer that we want. We'll probably have to grab some more. Where do I look? So we're gonna need some more. Sometimes I like to just use my finger, if I'm being honest. It's the best way to do it. 
Sometimes it looks better with a color under it, but it's fine on its own too. So yeah, you could kind of come up in here and do that too, to the corner. Yeah, I don't mind it. It's getting a little bit carried away now, isn't it? Yeah, fun times. Now, I will say that I would probably not wear this look on a daily basis, if I'm being honest with you. It's kind of intimidating for me, this look here. I'm going to take a little more concealer under here. I just feel like I need it. Didn't know why, but I feel like I do. So I just finished watching this epic show that I've been obsessed with that I mentioned briefly one or two YouTubes ago um, called The Midwife, period piece. Oh my gosh, you guys, I binged watch it in what, two weeks? 12 seasons. Yes, 12 seasons in two weeks. I'm totally capable of that. I did something similar with um, Bridgerton and also with, what's the other one? Yeah, Bridgerton and Downton Abbey. Crazy, right? I know a lot of other people binge watch too. Whenever I grab a book, I can't put it down until I'm finished. Like I go crazy, I just need to finish it. And that costs me a lot of money because books are not cheap. But now there's audiobooks. But I'm not really into that. I really love a real like a book, the smell of a book, holding a book, putting a little bookmark in it. There's just something special about it. And when I give anyone the gift of a book, I write in it. I give them a little message. And I think that's special. So that's the difference between um, regular traditional books hardback covers, softback covers, whatever, whatever you want to call them, and audiobooks for me. And if I was going to receive one, I would want someone to write a little something and sign it to me. And that's a keepsake. That's what I think. What do you think? We're going to do a little bit of eyeliner. I'm going to use this Wet n Wild liner. I love it so much, you guys. So inexpensive. It is the ColorCon Coal Eyeliner. And this one is so good. I'm trying to see what the color is. I want to say it's cocoa, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, maybe it's coffee. I can't remember. Anyway, it's the best brown ever. And so I'm going to go ahead and use it and just place a little bit here in the corner. And just kind of smudge smudge that in with the brush a katie jane hughes brush that is not a brush <laughs> that is a lip liner but thank god it's similar in color oh sorry that's hilarious so yeah i don't know what this is turning out to be i think i've got so many emollient products mixed with this and mixed with that that whatever this turns out like, it's like a potluck dinner, right? Everybody brings something, you never know what you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. So yeah. So guys, still contemplating, still contemplating on what to do with this airline credit from American Airlines slash British Air. I have until July to use it, like mid-July. I fought for this credit, okay? I fought hard for it. it. Took me a few attempts. They wanted to ignore me, absolutely did. And I wasn't having it. I was gonna get something out of that. I know we've probably talked about this before during my, my YouTube video about my trip to the UK, but I've gotta know what to do with it. It's too much money to fly in the States, but it's, where would I go? Obviously, it wouldn't be to London. It would have to be somewhere else because I'm not into getting traumatized again in Heathrow Airport. I could fly into another airport, but I don't know. Some people tell me, 
no, no, don't come to the UK, Lori. Just stay in the States. Go see your family. And I'm like, yeah, but I kind of know where I'm going if I do that. Been there, done that. Know where I'm going to eat. Know what we're going to visit. <sighs> While family's great and it would be good to catch up, I just want to be a little adventurous and see something new, you know? So if you have any suggestions, let me know. I've had a few, but I would always love a few more if you have one. If you don't, you don't. I thought we could attempt to make this more exciting by putting a little bit of this in the waterline, if possible, just to give it a little more drama and darkness. I think it'll help me to get used to all of this orange I've got going on. I don't know if I'll do it with this amount, probably need more. If you notice, I got some of the eyeliner off of the brush. But yeah, I usually just like to close my eyes and roll it around in there. Sometimes I draw um, directly with the brush too, but this should work. This should give it a little something. Okay, that's not black, it's brown. If it was black, it would be way more intense. We are gonna get into some mascara. L Lash by Urban Decay. I haven't been impressed with it, really, but I'm not really impressed with many mascaras because, as I've said, if you don't have a lot of lash, what are you going to do? There's no product that's going to wow you, right? I think at this point, I will admit, I do like the Maybelline Sky High for a drugstore. I do use the L'Oreal Voluminous for clients with a spoolie, a disposable spoolie, that is and the waterproof. And I do love the Vive Mascara. One of the reasons I love it is because it's not hard on my lashes. It's not hard to remove. It doesn't smudge. I will give them that. It's a very good formula. So yeah, we're not gonna do a ton of this. Waste of time. Time for one of my things, lip liners. I'm gonna use this is the ultra easy. I never know anything about this company. RK. It's in the beauty supply. It's probably some random company somewhere. But I like it. So whoever they are, it's like a dark brown. I think it's one of those where you could use it as a eyeliner as well. Notice this was the one I got in the corner over here. So yeah, thought we would use a Pat McGrath lip today from the Bridgerton collection. Guess where I found that? I did not order it from Pat McGrath's website. I ordered it, <laughs> ordered it. I ran into it inside of TJ Maxx. Mm-hmm, for a lot cheaper. I've gotten most of my Pat McGrath inside of TJ Maxx. Crazy, right? So that's what we're going to do. Also, we are going to use this liner for something else. I'll show you what it is. Take this brown liner and just deepen the beauty marks. This is a good color for that. Two of them right there. Bam, bam, there you go. This is a very versatile pencil. Lip, you could use it as a lip liner, an eyeliner, a beauty mark maker, or enhancer, and probably on your brows if you really wanted to, right? Um, so we are gonna do the Pat McGrath lipstick. So this lipstick's called Veiled Rose. This is a satin formula. Goes on really nicely. Really nice. Done an excellent job. I mean, Pat is a good line. If you haven't heard of Pat McGrath. You know, I was talking, you know, I talk to clients about makeup when I'm doing their makeup and they're always like, oh, what was that? I like that. Or they'll email me later. What was that blush? What was this? What was that? 
There are so many people that have never heard of Pat McGrath. Clients, family members, friends, especially here in the DMV, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. And I mean, it's crazy to me. They have never heard of um, Beef. Never heard of Eve. It's not in Ulta. It's not inside of Sephora. Um, they've never heard of it. My clients haven't. My friends haven't. My neighbors, whoever, like family, friends, you name it. They do not know what Eve is. And my clients, a lot of times, have Charlotte Tilbury. Um, you know, some of the buzzwords they see on TikTok and Instagram and all that. But they apparently have never, never come across it. And have never heard of it. So yeah, some people in the United States, I guess, have to show them what some of these brands are, but not me, I'm not in the mood. In the end, I don't mind this look. I know I said I wouldn't wear it out and feel comfortable in it, maybe, but after some revisions and after some blending and adding a little mascara, just a little bit, a little bit of eyeliner, I think, it's very doable. Um, I added a little more liner to the Veiled Rose lipstick. I just felt like it was a little bit boring by itself. But again, no foundation, just some concealer under the eye and some spots. Not bad, I will say so myself. I'm not too disappointed at all. And it kind of feels good. That's one less thing to feel like you've got on your skin, you know? Um, I think that would be great for summer. You know, just a very sheer wash of a highlighter, creamy highlighter, and all the other stuff. I think that would feel good. Um, what else did I want to say to you? There's something. I know what it was. What I wanted to say is, is that I'm really not going to go to the trouble of writing down all the products I used today. If you followed along and you really wanted to know, you could pause and write it down. I'm not going to write list it all down. I don't have any affiliate links. I'm not selling anything. I'm not getting commission off of anything. I'm not here to be famous or be a influencer. I am here for fun. It's therapeutic. I like talking to my camera, okay? <laughs> I like talking with you guys and hopefully some of you will watch and think this was fun and feel a little bit like you got to know me if you wanted to. Let's face it, some of you don't and um, that's fine. You don't have to watch again or you could hit pause or you could just, you know, unfollow. Why did I say that? I really don't want you to unfollow. I mean, we've become friends so far. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good weekend because it is Friday and that you enjoy yourselves, that you pamper yourself a little bit, whatever that means for you. A good cup of coffee, putting your feet up, watching a movie, reading a book or out with your kids, um, doing something fun with your family, shopping. Maybe if you're working, take care of yourself. Don't work too hard and make sure that y'all stay safe. So, yeah. Well, the next time we'll see you, I imagine it'll be February. So see you next month.